If I do a broad categorization of document management softwares, there are two. One, a dedicated document management software. The whole purpose of that software is to deal with documents, manage the workflow and things like that. For example, SharePoint. However, most of the times, people create database applications, web applications, and one small module in that is documents, upload functionalities or download features or displaying some information from somewhere, things like that. So, in that case, the host application, the application that hosts that document management feature is the main focus. Document management is a small piece in it. So, the authentication, just to provide an idea about what authentication is and what the difference between authentication and authorization is, authentication is mostly sign in, login, log off, sign off, things like that. The only responsibility of authentication is to validate the user. ID check, that's all it is. For example, let me give an example. You go to a highly secured five star hotel, right? At the gate of the hotel, somebody checks your ID and say, show me your photo ID. And they look at the photo and look at your face and say, yeah, you are he, good. You got entrance. Now the, he gets into the hotel. Once you go inside the hotel, he may not have access to anything. He cannot go to the gym. He cannot go to a room. He cannot go to any hall, anywhere. He has to sit at the visiting room, basically nothing. So whether he has got access to a particular room or a gym, all those things are responsibility of authorization, access control. They will decide whether you have access to these things. As a matter of fact, the access control would even decide whether you can come inside the welcome room, right? So responsibility of authorization and authentication do not get confused. One is just an ID check. However, just an ID check is a big topic, big deal because companies spend so much money and effort into ID check. That part of security is really, really, really challenged by hackers all over the world. That's why people spend millions into authentication. Coming back to document management, as I said, a hosting application deals with authentication and authorization is the only thing that has to be dealt with for a document management software, usually. But the new world architectures are challenging this, changing now. There are two things that I want to talk about. Number one, when you ask for a document or file, a large file, you ask the web server, that's a different dedicated big server, hey, give me the document. The web server will go to backend Azure storage or AWS S3 storage and gets the file and supply you the file through the web server. Now just imagine you ask for hundreds of large bulk files. The web server will have to go to the storage, get the data, get the file, large file, stream it in, then stream it out to the browser. So much bandwidth and server memory is being utilized here. So what we do is we propose a new approach, uh, a hop of a server. That means the file streaming sh should not happen through the web server. It should happen through a different server. Now, that also gives us a different uh, uh, challenge. Uh, we usually deal with this through single sign-on, but those were the recent but modern uh, uh, techniques, but they are all going to change very soon. How the hop over server is being handled, the security, the authentication part is handled. So the security models are changing now. So the, a browser gets the file path, only the URL from the web server, and ask a different server to supply the file. And when they ask the other file server for the file, 
that file server has to ensure two things. Number one, authentication. It has to ensure this guy who is asking me for information is the right guy, identity check. Usually it is done through something called SSO, uh, auth, and there are techniques people use. We will get into the details later, but the theory is that server has to validate the integrity of this person, the request. Now, once that is cleared, this person also has to validate this person has authorization, that means access check done or not. So authentication and authorization both are the responsibility of the file server as much. Now, what happens is the responsibility of the web server is to provide authentication, obviously, because that's a hosting site. It also need to validate the document authorization because whether the policy or vehicle or whatever entity or folder or the file itself, does the user got access? Then only the system can redirect this person to the other server. So the file server has to essentially do two things. Number one, it has to do authentication. Number two, it has to do authorization. Because no matter what, the if the person has no authority to read the document, he should not be served with that. If the user is not a legitimate user, he should not be given access. So when you build a, a different front, we call it front or a front uh, is a design pattern we use, we'll talk about it. But when we use a different friend for document serving, we need to ensure the document server is capable of doing authentication and authorization. Today we use some techniques to do the authentication and authorization by the host application and pass information. We use techniques like SSO, OAuth, and there are many more things to talk about. But essentially, document management architect needs to really understand the authentication component of file transfer and hopping servers. Number two, in 2026 onwards, four years down the line, I suspect that file management technology and document management technology will completely be transformed into something else. It is most likely to be driven by public blockchain. In the public blockchain world, files are stored in, in a file server, let's say IPFS. Now, the access control and authentication is not typically done through a web server. It's directly done from the browser through some other uh, intermediary servers. There are cache servers, there are uh, CDN servers, and there are several variations to IPFS applications these days. So whoever does this authentication and authorization, they have to engage Web3. The challenge about Web3 is it's out in the browser. It's not a server-to-server -server communication. So anytime when you have to deal with true authentication and authorization at a browser level, it's more challenging, but it's practical too. Uh, many people are getting concerned about the security, uh, integrity of the security and things like that. But the change is coming. Be prepared. Four years, things are, the document management, especially the public uh, data document management, for example, YouTube and things like that, are going to completely be transformed by blockchain. So one of the things that we want to review is how authentication can be achieved through Web3. What are the current practices? What are the current system who are claiming they have a working solution? The next thing I want to do is I want to challenge it. I want to try to break it. That's the only way to tell whether they have a good solution or not. For more videos on this topic, Please subscribe the channel.